Everybody, welcome to Tech for Psych. I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, your medical doctor confidant. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Muse headband series versus the new Focus Calm headband from Brainco. There's a number of differences in these devices, and my goal is to explain to you the pros, the cons, the differences so that you can understand which one might be the best fit for you if you do decide to make an investment. First, we're gonna take a look at the apps and the software that the devices offer, followed by the comfort and the hardware. Then we're gonna take a look at the sensors and the resultant brain data that comes out of them, followed by specific meditative techniques that work best for each devices, and then finally rounding that out with the different pricing structures that are available right now. Now, both of these companies have been around for a little while, both in research and development and interacting with customers, and they've each undergone iterations of different devices and incorporated in what they've learned in the past into their new hardware and software. The Muse headband company Interaxon is in Toronto, Canada, and they've been around since 2007, but really it wasn't until 2014 when they put out their first Muse device. Uh, most people call it Muse 1, direct to consumer. They followed that up in 2018 with the Muse 2 that actually incorporated in heart rate and positional data as well. And then in 2020, Muse S, which was more tailored towards uh, sleep meditation, but also incorporated in all the capabilities of the previous two devices as well. Now BrainCo for the Focus Calm has been around since 2015. And with their first device, Focus One, they were really focused on uh, research and development, using it in classrooms, using it in work environments, and really learning how EEG technology could be applied in learning scenarios. Then they went through a Harvard Innovation Lab in 2017, and now we have in 2021, their newest device, Focus Calm, which is tailored direct to consumer. The Brain Code team has really improved a lot of things to include ease of use, and then also incorporation of a specific meditative technique to get people into flow state. So there's some differences in all those categories between these headbands. Let's dive into each category and go a bit deeper. But real quick, if you're enjoying this content, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button to support me in Tech for Psych, where we combine the latest in neurotechnology with ancient wisdom to supercharge your brain. We'll have content like this coming out all the time, so be sure to hit that bell and get notified when new videos come up. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at Cody Rawl underscore Tech for Psych, in which I show you behind the scenes making of these videos, testing the different devices and respond directly to direct messages from people that ask questions about the devices and I incorporate those questions into these videos so it's real fun. Let's take a look at the apps and the software available on both platforms both the Muse headband series and the Focus Calm headband. So when we talk about the different softwares that are available to these devices we should differentiate between the primary app that comes with the devices as well as third-party apps that are available to the consumer. When it comes to the Focus Calm headband I would actually say the app that comes with the headband has more range of experiences than the Muse headband. This is because the Muse headband is really focusing on meditation specifically. So their app is a little bit more simplified. You know what you're doing. You're getting into a meditative experience. You're going to concentrate on your breath and you're going to get neurofeedback exercises to strengthen that ability. But with the Focus Calm, it has a little bit more of a structured gamified approach. They're really training you on this structure called learn, strengthen, and challenge. They want you to learn how to get into a relaxed state, strengthen that through neurofeedback exercises, and then challenge you to stay within that state while you go through different cognitive exercises. And the different cognitive exercises train different areas of your brain. They've got memory exercises, decision-making skills, and focus exercises. And all these manifest in different games that come up that you can play while you wear the Focus Calm device. So it's really training you to learn how to relax, strengthen that through the neurofeedback exercises, and then challenge you through the memory, focus, and decision-making games. As far as third-party apps go, the Focus Calm really just came out, but there's not to my knowledge any third-party apps that are available to the users. They really just are putting that first app out there. Now that's not to say that um, they won't allow third-party developers to create different experiences, but for now there's not really any third-party experiences available for the Focus Calm headband. This is in contrast to the Muse headband series where there are several third-party apps that actually have really great functionality outside of the regular Muse meditation app. I should mention that the Muse series actually collects more data than the Focus Calm does. Not only does it collect EEG data, but in the Muse 2 and the Muse S, they collect actual heart rate data and positional 
data that you can incorporate into your meditative experiences. I haven't found a whole lot of use for those biometrics, but I think they're cool. I mainly focus on the EEG brainwaves with uh, myself and my clients, but at least they're there. In addition, I should mention that for sleep exercises, Focus Calm does have calming down exercises that you can use to go to sleep. But I would say that the Muse S is highly specialized in that niche. And they have meditative techniques to help you calm down and actually track your sleep data throughout the night, which the Focus Calm is unable to do. I put out a previous video on the Muse S versus the Dream. Dream does not seem to be selling direct to consumer at the moment. They're more in a research phase, whereas Muse S actually, on people's advice, went from just collecting brain data before sleep to now being able to collect data throughout the night. But the third-party apps that I really should mention for the Muse series that are not available on the Focus Calm, um, ones that are really popular are Mind Monitor, which you can find uh, on the Mind Monitor website, where you can record your brain waves, whether you're doing cognitive exercises or meditating, and get nice printouts of the actual different frequency bands of that experience. And what's cool is that you can actually download those pictures and then upload them to different social media sharing websites like Facebook and has actually been a nexus of information for groups like the Heart Mind Alchemy Group, which is really active on Facebook. So um, that definitely has a social component to that third-party app, which you might enjoy with Muse Headband. In addition, there is a company out of Tel Aviv called MindLift that has reverse engineered the neurofeedback paradigms into the Muse Headband, working closely with Interaxon to make that happen. And that's become an incredible platform to use if you can find a practitioner that can work with you to do neurofeedback exercises is using that platform. It's actually the one that I use in my brain circuit training program, and it works really well. Interestingly enough, they're actually setting it up to the International Space Station next year in 2022 on the Axiom 1 mission. So that's really exciting as well. In terms of comfort, I would say that the Focus Calm ties the Muse S for the most comfortable device. I would say that they both beat the Muse 1 and the Muse 2, and here's why. With the Muse 1 and the Muse 2, you have your forehead sensors and you have your ear sensors. Now, in order to get the ear sensors best fit snugly behind your ears, you're often going to want to use maybe a little bungee cord um, that I got for Mind Lift, or you can actually buy these on Amazon to tighten them around your head. And what ends up happening is that when you do that, it actually puts some pressure on your forehead here and behind your ears. And if you're wearing these devices for a long period of time, that can become somewhat uncomfortable. And I'm gonna talk about these uh, behind the ear sensors here in, in a little bit in the next section. But what's nice about the Muse S is that it's really soft and it just fits so snugly around your head like so. Whereas with the Focus Calm, you don't have to worry about ear sensors and you just throw on with the with the forehead sensors like so. And it, it's very comfortable. I could wear this all day and just not even notice it. Um, I would say the difference between the Focus Calm and the Muse S is that the Focus Calm is going to definitely be easier to clean between users than the Muse S will. Also, there's been some complaints online about the Muse S losing sensor capabilities over long term. So uh, you have to be careful not to stretch it out too much. And um, you know, if you're going to wash it, you have to be really careful because these softer EEG sensors are probably not as durable as these uh, hard EEG sensors that you find on these other devices to include the Focus Calm. Now, Focus Calm hasn't been out that long, so we'll see how it holds up to the wear and tear of daily use. But, uh, you know, my Muse S is fine. Um, I use it probably a couple of times a month, maybe not every day because I'm testing other devices, um, and I haven't had any problems with it. I'm just saying what I've heard online. Both devices were able to connect to their apps just fine. I do recommend wetting the sensors before you put on any of these devices. It really seems to improve the connection. I would say that the uh, both the Muse and the Focus Calm apps look great on smartphones. The Focus Calm app on an iPad needs a little work. It doesn't really come up as nicely as on the phone and is something that I think that they need to improve. As far as sensors, it's really interesting. And I talked to Max Newland, president of BrainCo, about this. Focus Calm actually decided to just go with two active electrodes and one reference electrode on the forehead. And the reason that they did this is that they tr are trying to reach this balance between comfort and ease of use and the quality of data. I want the simplest way for people to achieve the goal that they're setting out to accomplish. And if I can get that done with three sensors, which we can, then that's gonna simplify things. It's gonna reduce uh, you know, possible uh, things going wrong, et cetera. So with the three sensors, we're, we're able to capture the cognitive state that we're really interested in and help people improve that. 
And if we can do that in a simple way, simple, easy to use way, then, you know, heck yeah, we're going to go for it. And in their research, they found that if they just use EEG data from the frontal lobes, uh, it obviously influenced by uh, global patterns as well, that that was enough data to understand where someone's state of mind was in the neurofeedback exercises. If you think about it, getting into flow state has a lot to do with your frontal lobe sort of quieting down activity and releasing inhibitions. If you think about a race car driver going 200 miles an hour on a racetrack and having to make split second decisions, they're probably not using their conscious mind to make those decisions. They're really relying on uh, motor memory and instinct to make those minute changes. And uh, a lot of our world is like that. You can think of extreme sports, or you can even think of being in social situations and picking up on social cues. There's a lot of benefit to being able to get into flow state, and that's really what the Focus Calm is training you to do. There's been a lot of debate in the community, and I've spoke to a lot of uh, founders and CEOs and presidents of these companies, and the question is, how many sensors do you really need to be able to do uh, neurofeedback exercises? Is it really worth auxiliary electrodes that go into different areas of your scalp that have to get through the hair? You know, and I think about the emotive devices where you, it was very difficult to get all those different sensors through your hair to get a good connection, or are you able to accomplish that with just forehead sensors? Um, I've worked with a neuroscientist, Kiefer O'Sullivan, before, who's been on this channel a couple of times, and he's looked at the raw data of the Muse headbands, and although the frontal data really uh, was, was quite nice on the EEG data, he did have problems with the, the back behind the ears data coming out of those rubber sensors that look uh, honestly completely different than what are coming out of the, the forehead sensors. And so when you look at the raw EEG, you can see the frontal bands are much more traditional than I would expect from an EEG. They fall within that, you know, 10, 20 microvolt kind of variation. It seems pretty clean. I, I see some things that are pretty reminiscent of what I'm seeing on more traditional setups. But then when you look at the temporal sensors that are made of conductive silicone, it's like the 75 microvolt deviation. It's, they're really prone to this sense of like noise. And so noise is basically just anything that is our non-neural data. Now you have to ask, is the machine learning able to still parse out the differences in data signals, depending on your state of mind, if the signal is blown out uh, that much on the back of the ear sensors? Uh, it's hard to tell, but Focus Calm seems to have um, felt that it was just best to go with the forehead sensors. That being said, Dr. Krieg Olson in his 2017 paper um, in his further research still has been using all four of the two forehead sensors and the two ear sensors to show that uh, ERPs can be done quite well with the Muse headband compared to an $80,000 ActiChamp machine. So the debate continues, but Focus Calm through their iterations has found that um, they feel like they can do the flow state training with just the forehead sensors. And that contributed more to the ease of use, just being able to throw it on so quickly and get into it and still get good data versus having to mess around with other uh, electrodes that go behind the ears or on your scalp. That being said, I think MindLift has come up with a nice solution where they actually have an extra electrode through a USB port that uses gel to go through your hair to get that good auxiliary electrode on top of your head, uh, which can be uh, very helpful for different uh, neurofeedback exercises. So there's a lot of different options right now and we'll see which ones pan out over time. As far as the meditative techniques that are best used with these devices, I've talked a lot about the Muse headband devices. It really uses a calibration phase followed by favoring you having a relaxed attention on the breath. Whereas Focus Calm has more of a structured gamified approach through that learn, strength, and challenge and uh, different games that give you points based on how well you're doing. I think both devices favor more of a relaxed attention state, more of an alpha state. But again, we're dealing with machine learning here that uh, has been gleaned from expert meditators and people that have the ability to get into a quick relaxation response using that as a cohort to build classifiers to identify your data and compare it and give you feedback based on those parameters. But I think both devices are favoring that relaxed, calm approach, at least from my experience and what I've seen online people discuss. As far as price goes, both setups are quite comparable. Currently the Focus Calm with a lifetime subscription falls in at about $200 for the hardware and $100 for the software. So about $300 for the full setup. This is right in between the Muse 2 for $250 and the Muse S for $350. Also, if you wanted to get additional 
additional meditation packages with the Muse headbands, you add about $30 to each one of those packages. Of note, the Muse headband is quite functional without additional software packages, but the Focus Calm will be very limited without its respective software package. So don't even separate that $200 from $100. It's really a $300 package to be fully functional. Also, I should note that the Mind Monitor and the Mind Lift programs with the Muse are separate packages altogether and not included in a basic Muse headband purchase. The Mind Monitor app is very low cost. You should be able to get it very easily. But in contrast, finding a practitioner to work with and using a Mind Lift program will be quite a bit more time consuming and expensive. I think you have more variability with the Muse headband for meditative techniques. You can do that relaxed attention to get good scores on the main Muse app. And then of course you can do different meditative techniques using Mind Monitor or uh, choose different parameters on Mind Lift if you have a practitioner to work with. But with Focus Calm, they really have more of a structured approach and you can really use that relaxed state to train different cognitive abilities in your mind to include memory, focus, and decision-making skills. So overall, I would say that the Muse is more specialized for relaxed attention on the breath meditation and has more variability in apps to explore meditation but the Focus Calm really allows you to train specifically for flow state and gives you more of a structured approach if that's what you want. So hopefully that helps. I'm Dr. Cody Roll with Tech for Psych. I hope to uh, read a lot of questions and comments on this video so I can learn what you guys are thinking and uh, respond accordingly. Thanks so much for the listen. Talk to you next time.